What's up, dudes? I'm out here. Hold on. Is my microphone working? Yeah, it is. I'm out here at the shitty rainy auction to look at a car. I've been thinking about doing this for a while. Kind of not having my own car and just uh, buying random stuff, driving it until I get bored with it and then sell it because that's kind of what I do anyway. And today there's a uh, Fiat 500 Abarth out here at the auction. It says it's worth like uh, 4300 If I can buy it for that and it's not a pile of shit, I will probably do that. See if I can find it. There it is. It says it's a theft recovery, which I don't love. But whatever. Oh, cool. The window's already broken. That's nice. <laughs> it's raining inside of it. That's perfect. What a good start. This is a theft recovery. This is a stick shift. Oh, let's see. I drove a different car today. So I don't have my booster box or anything like that. So hopefully... Hey, it cranks. Does that window go... Oh, okay. Window's off track. <laughs> this is a good start. Whoop. That sounded not great. I think it's just the track, though. All right. Well, that's fun. <laughs> cool. Good start. Oh, uh, let's see. My neutral, yeah. Interior's not bad. I got no warning lights that I can tell. Got a sunroof, which appears to actually close. I guess that's good. No leaks there. Got a window that's off track. It's got automatic heat, which I like. Hate having to turn the heat on and off. Auto. There we go. Okay, see how it drives. Okay, overall I like it. The window kind of in the shitty tent kind of helps because I think that'll make it a little bit cheaper, <laughs> to be honest. It feels like the motor mounts are kind of weak, uh, but otherwise, like, pretty decent. No airbag lights on. The seat feels loose. That's disconcerting. <laughs> but overall, it seems like the kind of car I would buy to try to make a little bit of money on because, like, you know... I don't really want it to be too perfect. I gotta figure out why the miles are flashing constantly. And aside from that, like, seems like a pretty decent little car. I think that's just not locked in. I think I can fix that. I know I can fix that. Okay. So here is the back. The tires all look good, which is quite a concern because when you're buying a car to flip, a whole set of tires can kind of screw you up. Uh, a rear seat headrest. Hopefully the next person that buys it won't notice that. It's got the subwoofer. It's got a tiny trunk. I guess no Costco runs in this bitch. Pretty decent overall. Like, yeah, this is going to be a regulator. Can definitely fix that. Uh, let's pop the hood and see if there's any leaks or anything. Let's get the VIN too. Um, there we go. Here's the VIN. All right. Let's see. Yeah, I don't see anything grievously wrong under the hood. Has oil. Has an intake, which I could kind of tell from the sound, the cool sounds it was making. It's held on by a zip tie, so you know it's good. Uh, has oil. Has coolant. Looks decent. Okay. Probably gonna try to buy that hoopty. Hey, look, Cooper S. I don't like the four doors though. It's a Clubman. Meh. But yeah, at any rate, probably gonna try to buy that car. Uh, probably a bad decision, but usually when I make good decisions, they backfire. When I make bad decisions, they work out. So uh, I'm gonna try to go back to just making stupid impulsive decisions about cars and business and hope that I go back to uh, everything working out. Should be cool. All right, we'll see what it goes for. Uh, it says the MMR is 43. I think that's you know, should be on, like, the low side of that, given the condition that's got, like, peeling tint, and, you know, it's just overall not perfect. So, uh, I would definitely, I'd probably go up to 45, even. But I'm hoping that it'll be, like, a 3800 or $4,000 car. Oh, look, another one. There's a blue one. I don't think that's a turbo, though. I have zero interest in the base model. Huh. Let's check it out. 
So I did not get that Fiat. Um, this is honestly the hardest part of buying cars at the auction is not getting frustrated, especially right now when it's tax season and everything is really higher than it should be. So I did some research last night and one thing I noticed that the seat was loose. I thought that would be a relatively simple fix, but that means that the seat frame has to be replaced, the lower seat frame. And um, in the video of the car, the mileage, like the odometer was flashing. So I Googled around to uh, see what that meant. And that means that one of the modules says lost communication. It could just be because of the battery being dead or jumped off wrong, uh, which I don't know how you'd really do that other than reversing the polarity, which seems like it would do way more than that, but whatever. So that said, to fix that, you can try to re like pull the cables, positive and negative cable off the battery and leave it for like five minutes and then reconnect it and that might work or you've got to get a new module or have it reset by the dealer or something so none of that sounded super fun but i was still going to buy the car because i'm an idiot as long as it was cheap enough but it ended up uh, at like 4800 or 5000 which was over wholesale book for a car that i thought wasn't in that great of shape like if it had no problems i would have paid five grand for it um but with the window issue so i've already got to do a window regulator maybe a module, maybe a seat frame, or try to find a seat from a junkyard. So yeah, I just didn't feel like it was worth it. Uh, so now I'm gonna repeat this whole process over again, try to find something interesting at the other auction and go out there and look around. Fun. Okay, so like I said, didn't buy the Fiat. I found two cars out here at the other auction that I wanna check out. One of them is actually exactly what I want. It's a 2012 Mazda Speed 3, and I just happen to have, I swear to God, it gets windy just as soon as I break this camera out. Keep forgetting the damn uh, dead cat. So, at any rate, 2012 Mazda Speed 3, and I just happen to have a motor for that car, and it's on in-op, so it should, A, need a motor, and B, be pretty cheap. So, uh, going to check that out, and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about the other one. Okay, so here's the Mazda Speed. It's on the in op on. And uh, since it's not obviously wrecked or anything, that should mean that it's inoperable because of motor or something. So we got kind of shitty headlight. Don't really care about that though. Hood paint, not great. Eh, but overall, pretty decent. Interior is very nice. Says in op. So sometimes you can find something on the paperwork tells you more than just in op. I hate these smoke tail lights. To find some idiot to trade, give me their stock ones, and they can have the terrible looking ones. But yeah, nice interior. That's a very nice. So here's the other thing. This one's listed as just one miles which it is definitely not. But usually you can find, oh good, auto climate control. I hate manual climate control now. They all kind of separate there at the dash. But okay, pretty decent. But at any rate, this one's listed on the uh, auction side as one miles, because basically because it doesn't run, so they don't really know. But there's always a clue. At 100,786 miles in June of 2011, so it's probably still under 120, so that's good. Uh, this is a tow bill. Came in 314 in up. Mazda 3. Okay, so really, no more information. Let's look under the hood. Okay, well, I can safely say this one's definitely got a bunch of shit done to it. So the top mount is gone, and it's got a front mount down there. It's got a cork sport intake. It's got a blow off valve. And it's got the full race header. I have no idea what kind of turbos on it. What is this? That's a power wire. It probably had subs in it at some point. It's going around there, going around there. Caution hot, hands off. Don't know what that means. Okay. So we've definitely got a modified Mazda 3, Mazda Speed 3. 
that, uh, you know, I mean, honestly, that's cool with me. I'll, I'll determine what parts I want to keep and what I want to return to stock. Cause like I said, I have an entire stock motor. So that's pretty rad. Okay. We do a little bit of poking around. Okay. So here's the other car I wanted to look at. This one's actually run and drive and this will work pretty well because the, uh, since the Mazda speed is on the in op line, it'll come up first. If it does not sell, like if they want more than what I'm willing to give, whatever. I got this 05 Honda Civic Si, 154,000 miles. Missing that. It's been painted on before, I can tell. That quarter panel's been hit. Uh, crappy headlights. It's kind of par for the course for an 18 year old car though. Bunch of dents down this side. Should at least be a cheap, fun car. Let's see how it does. I need to find a better way of doing video of while I'm test driving. Cause like, I guess for an automatic, this is fine. But with a stick shift, not so great. This is a neat little car though. Uh, clutch feels like it's engaging and disengaging really close to the floor. If it's the original clutch at 154, that's probably why. I'm gonna put this down and drive. Uh, I don't know, maybe you can see. Let's find out. Uh, seems to pull hard. No smoking or anything. I mean, it pulls as hard as a Civic Si pulls, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure this is a fun little car. It seems like it. Scorch. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> well, that's gonna be cool. Hold on. Nobody's behind me. You can grab my camera. All right, I'll stop videoing. Okay, so I actually really like this little Civic. This is probably the safer bet. The Mazda Speed makes more sense to me though because I have the engine for it. The only thing that I don't really like about it is all the modifications because like, I would probably wanna put it back like pretty close to stock. It doesn't have to be like bone stock, but you know, I don't know if I want all the things going on because I'm guessing all those bolt-ons with, uh, without proper fuel is why the motor blew up, why it's sitting on the in op line right now, you know? So I don't really want to do a repeat of that. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. It always, always depends on price, you know? If the, um, oof. I'll pull the handbrake up, yeah. So if the Mazda speed's a good enough deal, I'll probably just take my chances and put it back basically to stock because I can probably sell all of the aftermarket stuff for a decent amount of money and whatever I like, like the catback exhaust or whatever, I can just keep. So that's gonna be my plan. If it goes too high, which that's the other thing, I really don't know what to pay for either of these cars. The Mazda Speed, not broken, but stock, assuming it has like under 120,000 miles, should be something like, shit, I don't know, maybe a eight or $9,000 car retail. So I'd wanna be in it for six-ish tops. Um, because I'm taking some chances there. So I'd want to pay under three for it. I don't really know what that Civic Si is worth. I guess I'll go do some research. Uh, it's a pretty clean car, but it's not perfect and it does have high miles. So who really knows? I guess I'll go uh, check some things out and bid on one or both of those in the morning. We'll see. Okay, yeah, of course the wind picks up. So of those cars I looked at yesterday, I am the high bidder on the Mazda Speed 3. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that I want it. Uh, they have until like 3.30, it's currently 11.30, to call and say that the buyer either accepted it or rejected it or counter offered or whatever. Uh, on the uh, Civic Si, um, I was also high bidder at 42.50 but they wanted more than that. It went no sale. See, this is actually like the worst time to try to buy anything because it is tax season. And that might not mean a lot to most people, but to a used car dealer, that's when people get their tax returns and they buy cars. So prices on everything are all jacked up. In like a month or two, a car like that Civic Si would totally be buyable at 35, four grand, something like that. But since it's tax season, the price on everything is like over book value. It's kind of insane. 
Um, you can usually get lucky on stuff that doesn't run and drive because most dealers are just looking for something that they can pretty much immediately place on their lot and sell, you know. So we'll see. But uh, as of right now, it looks like I have bought the Mazda Speed 3 because, see, I've got... So here is the Mazda Speed 6 parts car, and it's smashed to shit and back, so it's not really one that I would rebuild, but it's got like 68,000 miles on it, and it's uh, got, you know, like everything on it runs great. Like, I drove it, because you can see the suspension's not really hit or anything. So I actually drove the car. It pulls hard. Everything is cool. So I should be able to pull that motor out and put it into the Mazda Speed 3. Uh, since I did not buy the fit, I guess what I'm going to do is here in the next couple of days, I really need to start fixing all these other cars. So I've got the Miata that I need to put a turbo on. I've got a whole turbo kit, standalone, everything for it. And then this MR2 Spider doesn't really need much. I think it needs brakes and stuff. So I guess I'll, uh, I'll pull it out next and uh, clean it up and maybe drive it, and then that might keep me from buying another car for no reason. There's my truck that I need to eventually do something with. I have hot rod aspirations for it. Uh, I've got a, a bug trying to fly into my mouth. That's not great. I've also got this thing. This is an 05 Forester XT. It runs hot for some reason. It needs to come in the shop. Um, I don't think there's much wrong with it. It doesn't appear that it's head gaskets. I think it's like something, air in the cooling system or something. So I need to put a new battery in this one, get it rolling. So basically, I really don't need to buy any cars. I need to fix the ones that I have. Um, I just kind of bored and I want a stick shift, but I guess I'll fix my spider. It is about to be convertible weather. And uh, I am glad I got that Mazda Speed, theoretically because I've been meaning to do something with that parts car for literally years. So hopefully this works out. Um, I will update if I did buy the car. Okay, so like I said, I figured I had bought the Mazda Speed um, and especially like I called Daisy on the way home from work at like 350 something. I was telling her, I was like, well, it looks like I won the Mazda Speed because they didn't, it's still, showing up under my purchases and they didn't call me to be like, oh, the seller rejected your offer, they want more or whatever. As soon as I hung up with her, minutes before the 4 p.m. cutoff, uh, I get a call from the auction. And the guy says that the seller wants $4,000 for that 12 Mazda Speed 3. He said, but it runs and drives. There's nothing wrong with it. So of course I was like, okay, well, why is it on the in-op line? In-op line, as you would imagine, means inoperable. And usually it's wreck cars or cars with mechanical damage, like motor, transmission, whatever. I didn't, re the battery was dead on the Mazda 3, so I didn't even try to crank it because, again, it's on the in-op line. And uh, I did notice that it had a bunch of, like, go-fast stuff, but I didn't notice, like, a, you know, an access port or any kind of fueling or anything like that. So, you know, that kind of tracks, honestly. <laughs> Bolt on some, uh, some stuff and don't take care of fuel, and that's how you get a Mazda Speed 3 on the inoperable line with a bad motor. So he was like, but at, at any rate, the guy from the auction is like, I don't know. I was like, well, I guess uh, ask the seller what's wrong with it. Why is it on the in-op line? And I'll consider offering more money. So he calls me back and he says that the seller said the only thing wrong with it is that someone stole the fuel management, the, I'm guessing, a Cobb access port. He said, so it'll, he didn't want to run it on the regular auction because you can test drive the cars on the regular line. And if you get in it and nail it to the floor with a big turbo and a front mount and stuff on stock fuel, it's going to blow up. I was like, okay, well, that does make sense. So I said, well, tell him I'll give him 3,500. He was like, all right, I'll call you back. A couple more minutes later, the uh, guy from the auction calls me back and said, okay, he accepted it. So now I have purchased a mystery Supposedly, this is a really highly modified 2012 Mazda Speed 3. I obviously have no idea what all it has other than what I can see. It's definitely got a front mount. Uh, it definitely looked like it had like a solid motor mount over to the side or at least an aftermarket motor mount. It's got an aftermarket blow-off valve. It's got an aftermarket intake. I think it was cork sport or something. It's got an aftermarket header that says full race on it. And I assume it's got an aftermarket turbo because not many people will buy an equal length tubular turbo for turbocharger manifold just to put the stock turbo back on it. That's kind of dumb. 
Um, I presume it has exhaust on it because again, who's going to connect a tubular turbo manifold and aftermarket turbo, larger turbo to the stock exhaust? Pretty much nobody. So that's what I know that it has or can fairly well guess that it has. Uh, but otherwise, it's basically a mystery. And based on what the seller says, all I need to do is if I go, when I go pick it up tomorrow, I should be able to jump it off and it should crank right up. But don't fucking drive it because it has no tuning. It's stock fuel and stock ECU and stock everything on all those mods. So in theory, all I need to do is pick up like a Cobb access port, try and have a good idea of what the hell I actually have so that I can figure out how to tune for that and then make that happen. So I've either gotten a really good deal on a really fast car or I got screwed. I guess we'll find out next week. So I, I guess you should uh, like and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're not watching this on YouTube, you should go watch it on YouTube and then like and subscribe. And uh, I'll put out some more videos of whatever happens. We'll see. Neat. Later.